welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and today I'm super excited about a couple of things, but especially I'm excited to show you this. This, this, this is beautiful and amazing and rich and textured and layered. And would you be surprised if I told you that I made it with only one stencil? One mask, to be precise, the Peacock Plumage Mask, one of my designs for Joggles.com in the Peacock Collection. So basically, I'm going to show you how I did this, how I printed it over itself, over itself, over itself, over itself, over itself, to create something awesome and amazing and richly layered and textured. The key to this is understanding how to layer your color, understanding how to use your brayers, and understanding how to use the mask so that it is more interesting than just straightforward. So welcome to the studio. Um, I've got uh, something fun uh, to show you, a unique way to use one of my all-time favorite masks, and this is the um, plumes mask from the Peacock Collection by Joggles. The Peacock Collection included nine masks uh, and designs that uh, are reminiscent of Peacock. So this one is plumage. And um, the announcement that I have to make is that the Peacock Collection, the Gustav Klimt inspired collection, as well as the Klimt 2 collection, all of these stencils and masks designed by me for Joggles are on sale today, April 1st, 2022. They're on 25% off, and that's no joke. You know I had to say that. Um, so you can get 25% off, and all of my designs are in stock as of today. So hop on over to Joggles and get 25% off plus 50% off your shipping if you spend over $50, and they ship priority mail. So I know it's super exciting that this mask, the Peacock Plumage mask, along with all of my other designs, the Klimt 1, the Klimt 2, everything's on sale at Joggles. And it's no joke. It's no April Fool's joke. Remember when we used to do the April Fool's stuff? We did it to our parents when we were little. Then we did it to our siblings. Then we did it to our friends at school. I remember playing all those April Fool's jokes, trying to come up with really clever things, sometimes cruel things. Um, like putting saran wrap over the toilet. That was cool. Anyway, we used to do all that and it was also my grandfather's birthday. My mother's father was born on April 1st and so we always used to like to play jokes on him on his birthday. But today's no joke. There's a good sale at Joggles. All the stencils have been restocked. 50% off shipping over $50. You know the drill. Anyway, I'm really excited to say that it, this is a great deal. So the plumage mask, I am also using my favorite pad of rice paper, the sketch paper pad. This rice paper, if you're not familiar, is has a smooth side and that is facing up in the pad. It is the smooth side that you want to put down onto your gel plate. The uh, paper is sized on that smooth side. You can really feel the difference. Even if it comes out of the pad, you can feel that this side is more rough and this side is smooth. You want to put the smooth side down on the plate because it pulls off more paint than anything else, okay? So this is also a very durable rice paper. It's sturdy. It's not going to tear. Um, when you're using it with the gel plate, it takes a lot of layers, a lot of abuse, and even a lot of water, and it stands up sturdy. Plus, it glues down beautifully in collage because it's so highly absorbent. So that is, again, the 9 by 12 sketch pad of rice paper and the plumage mask. And I have my Dina Wakely 9 by 11 gel plate, which takes advantage of the 9 by 12 mask um, size wise, really much better than the 8 by 10 plate. And I've got it in a metal storage tin because my clamshell has long since cracked. So the metal storage tin by Dina Wakely for the plate is a great way to store your plate, keep it nice, and that is the gel plate storage tin. Okay, so a few of my favorite things, all right? So the next thing I'm gonna get is two six inch sprayers. 
So I have two deluxe sprayers by Speedball. They're six inches. They look like they're the same color right now, but typically I use them so that I don't have to clean the brayer completely between layers. So I'll use one for cool colors and one for warm colors. Um, today I'm working in warm colors, so I'll use one for light colors and one for dark colors. And that way I don't have to spend so much time rolling the paint off of the brayer onto a scrap paper on the side before I can keep moving. So do as I say, not as I do. Please don't put your gel plate away for any length of time with paint on it um, because it's hard to get off. I don't clean it when I'm printing, but it should be clean before you put it away because this is just a mess. Um, anyway, it's uh, just crusted around the edges and um, it, the best way to clean it um, quickly and easily is to strip across it Scotch heavy duty packaging tape clear. Strip it all the way across Take your fingernails, burnish it on there really hard, and then take the tape and peel it off, and it will pull off a majority of these little bits of very dry paint. You can't do it when it's wet, so let it dry and then do it that way. I should do that before I bring it on camera, but I want you to know that I am just as messy as the rest of you. Okay, so you know I always start with a light colored solid base layer, so I'm gonna start, I've got colors here. I've got Naples yellow, I've got dairy light yellow, I've got some pyro orange, and I might even put in a little bit of everybody's favorite teal, and then the color I'm gonna go over the top of everything with needs to be darker than everything, so I've got burnt sienna. So whatever you do on the bottom needs to be light to medium, and what goes on the top is darker than the rest of them, so. All right, so I always work from light to dark. So in doing so, I would come from yellow to slightly darker yellow to orange to teal. That would be my light to dark range. Because as you layer, um, you go slightly darker. You can't get light colors to show up over dark colors unless they're opaque. I always love to explain to you about the golden paints. These, both of these colors are considered opaque um, you can see the tick marks through this uh, Naples yellow on the right hand side, but you'll see like over here where the paint's a little heavier that it is opaque and that the teal is opaque. That is what the tick marks are for on the front of the container. You can see the black tick marks very clearly through this and that shows you that dairy lied yellow is translucent, but that these two are opaque. What does that mean? Well, that means that these two opaque colors will show up even over a very dark color because they are not translucent. But generally, when I'm using translucent colors, I'm always gonna work from light to dark because if it was not opaque, uh, a, a pale yellow like this would not show up over an orange or over a teal. If they were all translucent colors, light colors will not show up over dark colors. But today we've got two opaque but I'm still gonna be working from light to dark. So my base layer, I'm gonna use the Naples yellow. It's the lightest color I've got, and it's a kind of a really nice neutral, and I'm gonna roll that out in a nice thin layer with my six inch sprayer, which covers my nine by 11 Dina Wakely plate. Really quick and easy with a few strokes. I'm just getting it even here. I'm not gonna worry about lines from the brayer. Even if you get a line like that, you don't need to worry about it because by the time we layer, 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 you're never gonna see those lines. And remember when you put your brayer aside, it goes face up so that it doesn't stick to the table. That's why it has this nice flat back. So it goes face up. Okay, so now smooth side down on this nice sturdy rice paper, smooth side goes down into the Naples yellow. And we're gonna press and I'll see if I can give it a little extra pressure around the edges. Maybe it'll pull off some of that leftover crusted paint. You can see that my nine by 12 sheet is just, just almost completely printed with this 9 by 11 Dina Wakely gel plate. So I don't have any waste at all. I don't have any, I don't have two inches of white paper that I don't get to use when I spend uh, the money to buy this really nice rice paper pad. I want to use as much of the full sheet as I can. And I also want to use as much of the 9 by 12 mask design as I can. So putting that on a 9 by 11 gel plate really gives you almost full and complete coverage. All right, so I'm going to pull this up. 
it pulled up a little bit of the stuff around the edges. You can see that sort of here where it's a little crusted around the edges. And it's given me a nice, basically Naples yellow print. So the next color I'm gonna go to is the Dairy Lied Yellow. And I'm gonna use the same stencil for this. I'm gonna keep this simple and I'm gonna use the same mask. I am gonna use the same brayer because I'm back in yellow again. I'm not gonna worry about the Naples yellow that was in the brayer that didn't get cleaned off. And I'm gonna show you how to do this using just one stencil. So we're gonna put this back out and we're gonna take that Naples yellow sheet and we're gonna go slightly darker with the Dairy Lied yellow and print the plumage mask. So here we've got a nice, slightly darker yellow ghost print. Then I'm gonna remove the mask and I am going to take the paper and flip it in the opposite direction that it was printed, and I'm gonna print the ghost print right on here. So I flipped it in the opposite direction so that I would get an intersecting print rather than one that lined up. So now I've got some really nice texture and pattern going here and almost a clean plate. So the next color that I'm gonna go to is the Pyrrol Orange. So I'm gonna put that out and I'm gonna keep with my yellow brayer because the yellow is not going to adversely affect the pyrrol orange and I don't have to clean it that way. So I'm rolling out the orange, then I'm putting down again this plumage mask. Let's keep it simple. So now I'm gonna print that orange over these two layers of yellow. And that's gonna give me some beautiful bright colors. And for the reason that I wanna maintain that yellow, I'm not gonna print the ghost print this time, but I am gonna pull it for another piece of collage paper down the road. So rather than cleaning it off, I'm just gonna print it onto a cleanup sheet and we will use this to create another piece of collage paper. Okay, so now, my next layer, I'm gonna add a little bit of this teal, but I don't wanna put it everywhere because I don't want it to be teal everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it out and I'm gonna grab a smaller brayer so I can control a small amount of it on the plate. So I've got my two inch deluxe brayer from Speedball and I'm gonna put a few drops. Now, when I put drops, I'm tapping the fluid acrylic bottle. I am not squeezing it at all. I'm just merely tapping it. And because the fluid acrylics are uh, viscous, um, they're gonna come out with just a couple of taps. If you don't need to squeeze it. So now I'm gonna take that two inch sprayer and I'm just gonna bounce it kind of on this paint and give myself a little bit here and there, but not total coverage because this is opaque. It will completely cover the orange. So I don't want to completely cover the orange. I just wanna add a few accents of the um, blue. So I've got a few accents of that. Maybe I'll roll it a little bit more together in a couple places. And I'm gonna put the plumage mask into it and I'm going to press. I'm gonna give it a little more pressure. And now I've got some great accents of teal. I'm gonna flip it in the opposite direction because I can see that there's still paint down there on the plate. So flipping it and adding a few more accents in the opposite direction. That's looking really cool. And then I'm going to lift this and I'm gonna take that ghost print onto our cleanup sheet just to clean the plate. get that again. Now, a lot of the time people ask me about cleaning the stencils and masks because you can see that this has paint on it. The best way to do this is to just rub paper on it and get off as much paint as you can. 
or I suggest you have a dish basin of warm soapy water off to the side of your workstation. And when you're done with this um, and before the paint dries, that's imperative, it has to be before the paint dries, you can throw your mask or stencils into the warm soapy water and then swish them around and you'll get the paint off as long as it's wet when it goes in there. I don't really want the mask to be wet because I'm gonna use it for another layer. So what I'm doing is using that cleanup sheet and pressing off as much wet paint as possible. And that's as clean as it's going to get. Okay, so back to our sheet. Now, the next thing is the the trick that I'm gonna show you. So now we're gonna take the brown and we're gonna set aside this orange brayer and set aside this teal brayer. Those could also go into your basin of warm soapy water at this point while the paint is wet when I know I'm not gonna use them again because I'm gonna use this nice clean brayer for my last and final brown burnt sienna color. So I'm gonna put a really generous amount of burnt sienna on the plate. I'm gonna take my six inch speedball brayer and roll that out. I'm gonna put the peacock plumage mask into the um, burnt sienna and I'm gonna take this print and rather than just straightforward print it, I'm going to move it around randomly. I'm gonna move it and press it and move it and press more. I'm not even looking at what I'm doing exactly right yet. And then I will look and see that I need a little bit more coverage on these outer edges. And I'll see where I need more brown and I'll move around, get more here. And then a little bit more on this edge. So rather than a straightforward print, I'm bouncing around and laying this peacock plumage mask over itself and creating a beautiful multi-layered complex print with one mask, two brayers, one gel plate, one nine by 12 pad of paper, and one, two, three, four, five, colors of paint and look at this rich layering that's going on got a little heavy in the middle so it's the outer edges that are really beautiful what's happening right here I love that and I'm going to go through these steps again real quick to show you the different results that you're going to get every time you do something like this so I love the color combo but I think that the brown could be a little darker of a, of a color, and I think that I need to make sure I don't concentrate so many prints in the middle. Now, I could edit this all out and only show you um, what works, but um, I want you to see my process. So the brown, I have a little magenta on my table out here, which is another dark color. So I'm gonna blend some of that in with the brown and make it a little bit darker maybe, or a little bit of a reddish brown. So anyway, um, Let's try it again. So we're gonna do Naples yellow. We'll see what kind of different results we get with the same steps. And as good as I make a print, and I love a print, I can never make exactly that print a second time. It just doesn't work. So. Now this has got some ghosting on it from what's left behind, but I don't mind that. So that's the Naples yellow. Then we're gonna go to the Dairy Light yellow using that same yellow brayer. And then the mask and then printing the Dairy Light. So now we've got some darker yellow. We're gonna lift the mask, flip the direction, and print the ghost print. So now we've got some more complex layers of yellow. So then we're gonna come to the orange using the same yellow brayer. We're 
we're gonna bring the mask back and print the orange full page. We've got some nice high contrast there with the orange and the yellow that I would like to keep. So I'm gonna take that ghost print and put it on a cleanup sheet this time. Then I'm gonna put out a little bit of the teal, tapping it in several places. I'm gonna bring in my two inch brayer and sort of bounce it around so I can keep it light coverage. And I'm gonna put the mask right into that and print it straight. And I was just looking to make sure the mask is lined up opposite the way the last print went so that they don't line up. So I'm printing the teal straight and I'm gonna give it a little bit more pressure so I can get more coverage. Before you pull the paper off, you should sneak a peek and make sure that you've got good coverage. And then I am going to lift this up and I'm gonna go for a little bit more teal. So I'm gonna pull the ghost print. That's a pretty good amount of teal. There's still some left on the plate. So I'm gonna pull a cleanup sheet. See if I can get that off. The teal and the Naples yellow, they like to stick to the plate because of the titanium white that's in them. So now I've got this beautiful sheet with the oranges, the yellows, and the teal. And my last layer is going to be the dark masking color. So I've got the burnt sienna. And I'm gonna add into that a little bit of quinacridone magenta. I'm gonna take the brown brayer, mix those together. I wouldn't say it's that much darker, but it's more of a reddish brown, an even warmer brown, because burnt sienna is already a pretty warmish colored brown. So it's a little bit reddish, but not much darker, but it's still definitely darker than this, and that's what we want. Actually, it might be deceptively darker. So now we're gonna put this on, the plumage mask, and the idea is to move the sheet around, and maybe this time I'll look a little better, and add the plumage in changing directions and slightly overlapping. The overlapping is gonna make some areas of it darker than others, but the idea is not to print it straight, but rather to move around and see where you need more color. There we go. So it's a little better to look what you're doing. We all love random spontaneity, but this is coming out better because I can see where I wanna add more color. So I'm rubbing the paper where I wanna have more, like right here I wanna have something, so I'm gonna put it right there. And then I'm gonna get something over here. So I'm gonna put that here where I see there's more paint. So here we go. So we're moving it around and getting a better results than the first time. I got a little bit of a solid chunk in here and here, but my goal for this is for it to be collage paper, which it means it's going to be torn up. So it's really um, fine if it's not all exactly perfect. So there's a little solid right in here, but look at this beautiful layering that's going on in there. You don't even notice that the peacock um, plumage pattern specifically. Here you can see this one is a little bit more um, bold and this one is a little bit more subdued, but I bet you what this one could benefit from is the ghost print of that. So I'm going to take the cleanup sheet and get out the rest of the stuff in the middle. And there's a little bit of a corner up here that could use some more paint and there's a little bit of paint up there. So I love the way this came out. Lots of beautiful layering with that. Now I'm gonna lift up the ghost print and I think that that could give this a little bit more oomph. So I'm gonna transfer that to our first print, which is made it another layer. Um, it's definitely got beautiful complexity to it. And this one has definitely got more of the effect that I was going for, which is sort of like a batik kind of a tie dye effect. So there's two different examples with the same 
steps and the same paint colors and the same everything. But it just goes to show you that even I can never produce the same print twice. I wanted also to share with you that I created that print with yellow, brown, blue, and no orange, but it's still a little more straightforward of the peacock plumage. Not as complex as this one, but similar. And then I did it with many layers of blues and purples, and you can see the overlaying of that. But this is a beautiful example of how to take one stencil and print it kind of angled and crooked and multiple layers and sideways and give yourself some beautiful texture. So thank you for being here this week. Please subscribe or leave a comment or click a like. All of those things help my channel and they help me to be able to bring you new and improved and more content. So I would appreciate if you would do that. Also in the comments below, I'd love to hear what your favorite stencils are from my designs, whether it's from the Klimp designs or the Peacock designs, which ones are your favorite and um, why maybe. Um, I enjoy reading the comments and I reply to everyone. So I look forward to seeing what you have to comment below. I will give you a link below for the products used in this video as always. And thanks again for being here and I'll see you next week.